in the pointing experiment, we begin by directing our attention outwards, observing that everything we see has shape and colour. Everything is a thing. Then gradually we direct our attention closer to ourselves until finally we're looking in at the place we're looking out of to see if we also have shape and colour, to see if we're things at centre or no thing, capacity for the world. Point at something in front of you and notice its colour and its shape. It's a thing. Bring your finger down a little and point at something else and notice its colour and shape. It's a thing as well. Now point down at the floor. I can see shades and patterns there in the carpet. Now point at your foot and notice its colour and shape. It's a thing as well. Bring your finger up your body and point at your knee. You can see the colour and shape of your knee, another thing. Bring your finger further up and point at your torso. Observe the colours and shapes there. It's a thing as well. Now bring your finger out in front of you and point back at the place where others see your face, the place you're looking out of. What do you see here? Do you see your face? Do you see your eyes, your cheeks, your mouth? Do you see any colours or shapes here? Do you see anything here at all? I'm not asking you what you believe is here. I'm asking you to put aside belief and take a fresh look. Rather than what you think is here, what do you see here? Or not see in fact? Here's my experience. Looking in, I don't see my face. I see no eyes here, no cheeks, no mouth, nothing at all. Or to put it another way, looking in I see emptiness. This emptiness is boundless, still, awake. I'm now seeing what I am at centre, what I am from my own point of view, what I am privately. I'm now going to guide you through an extension of the pointing experiment. This involves pointing in and out at the same time. Two-way pointing. This indicates that the space at centre isn't just empty, it's also full. Looking in, I see the emptiness here at my centre. But I cannot see this emptiness without at the same time seeing what's filling it, my view out. This emptiness is now filled with my hands, the room beyond, and with various sensations, sounds, thoughts and so on. I find no boundary between the space here and the world there. My faceless consciousness merges with and becomes the world. Privately, I am the world. Of course, we remain aware of our public identities of what we look like to others and to ourselves in the mirror. I'm aware that for you I'm Richard, and I identify with Richard. I identify with my face, my body, my name, my age, my thoughts and feelings and so on. In other words, I'm aware of living a two-sided life. I have both a public and a private self. You can see my public self, but my private self is hidden from others. It's an inner secret. However, I believe that if you look there where you are, You'll see your private self, and you'll see that your private self is no different from mine. It has no face, no name, no age. It's capacity. If you're now seeing this faceless capacity where you are, then we're now sharing a wonderful secret, the secret of who we all really are. Of course, your view out from this capacity is different from mine, but the capacity itself, this boundless consciousness, is the same. Seeing that privately your space for the world is a different view of yourself from the normal view, the view of yourself from outside, the view of yourself as a person. Because not many people are yet aware of their private identity, then in a sense it's a new thing. Though of course it's not new at all. We've always been this aware emptiness, and throughout history many people have spoken about it. But if you haven't been aware of it, and then you come across it, it's normal to question whether or not this view is valid and true. For example, I can't see my face here, but I can see it in the mirror. Doesn't that prove that I have a face, that I'm not capacity at centre, I'm a person? 
There are also other questions that come up. Alongside questions about whether or not this view is valid and true are questions about its usefulness. If I remain aware of my private identity, what difference will it make in my life and in society? We'll begin looking into these questions in part two.